So a bit of housekeeping. Um, this is a 15 minute lightning session. For that reason, um, I will ask that we refrain from asking questions after the session, uh, at least in this room, but Tom can take questions outside the room uh, once we've uh, all departed. Um, so for this session, we are looking at MongoDB Relational Manager and uh, bringing your relational workloads to MongoDB with confidence. So this is an introduction of uh, a new product, takes away the pain from modernization products, uh, projects. And uh, delivering this for you is based out of Sydney, Australia. Uh, an individual who's re previously responsible for Mo uh, MongoDB charts, he's now focused on tooling to help migrate data from relational databases to MongoDB. Some say the character of Crocodile Dundee was modeled on this man <laughs> based upon his unique ability to wrestle crocodiles one-armed while using his other arm to box kangaroos. And perhaps he's in New York City for other reasons rather than MongoDB Worlds. I can't say whether that's true or not, but I do know he's our lead product manager for Relational Migrator. I give you Tom Hollander. <laughs> what an intro. Uh, thank you. So, um, in a recent survey of enterprise customers, um, it was found that 60% of those were trying to de decrease their dependence on their major relational database provider. Um, but of the customers that tried actually moving off um, their database, um, over 80% of those projects either went over budget or some of them actually failed altogether. So if you're one of those people that would like to move off your creaky old relational databases onto something like MongoDB, how can you do that with confidence and how can you make sure that you're not one of those 80% uh, of people who um, don't get good results? Um, so my name is indeed uh, Tom Hollander. I may or may not wrestle crocodiles um, like all Australians apparently, um, but I am definitely lead product manager at MongoDB um, and today I will be talking to you all about our, our new product, Relational Migrator. Very exciting to be here. So before we get into the details of the tool, let's talk about why you might even want to do this. Does anyone have any internal applications that look a little bit like this? Maybe using some like UI ideas that felt like a good idea in kind of 1998, um, probably using some technology stacks that um, might raise a few eyebrows today, and almost certainly using a relational database under the covers to store all that information. So if you do have these old applications, almost certainly not architected and definitely not visually looking the way that you would choose to uh, build those today. But at the end of the day, they still work, right? They're doing their job, they're ticking over, they're solving some kind of business problem. So if you have some of these applications, why don't you just leave them be? Well, the reality is these systems, even if they do kind of sort of work, are actually going to that they have some hidden costs um, that you will be paying kind of every day. So firstly, they're very, very hard to change. So your business does evolve even if these old applications need to be kept alive. And particularly if you're using a relational database, um, making schema changes to support modified business requirements can be extremely painful. So anytime you have to change a schema, you probably need to be looking at some kind of in-place migration to make sure the data all complies with the new schema. You'll probably have to update stored procedures that get data in and out, as well as your object persistence uh, tiers. Um, and if your database is shared across multiple applica applications, which unfortunately is a very common pattern, um, you're really scared to do that because you're worried that if you make any changes, you're gonna break things. Um, so your agility has just kind of gone down the toilet. And also, because these schemas are so complex, like any single business concept is probably represented in this huge number of interlinked tables. So getting data in and getting data out is, very, is, is often more difficult. It's often even very hard to even store information that accurately reflects uh, a dynamic business environment. And last but certainly not least, the cost of keeping these systems alive can be pretty high. And again, focusing on the database tier, um, the hardware is often very expensive. Uh, a lot of these databases require um, scaling up to support, the, um, to support your, your um, performance requirements, which can be very expensive. Uh, the licensing for all these databases is uh, very expensive, and sometimes someone will knock on the door with a clipboard when you least expect it, um, doing audits for your licenses, and you probably don't want that either. 
Um, and as um, some of you might have seen from Mark Porter's uh, presentation yesterday, um, for people that are successfully able to modernise their application, move to a modern application stack, which of course requires a modern database, uh, the benefits have been pretty uh, significant. So we've seen, um, in terms of, of, uh, of, of agility and um, velocity, uh, improvements of around three to five times, and looking at the cost, and the cost is not just the, uh, the hardware and the software cost, but also just the cost of developing, maintaining these systems can be reduced significantly. So yeah, it can be a, a, a fair bit of, of effort to, uh, to modernize applications, but the rewards can be real, and you can get rid of those 1990s UIs at the same time too. So great, you've decided, hey, I'd like to modernize some applications. Like, how do I go about doing that? And this is oversimplified, um, but I am just trying to call out some of the key things that you'll likely need to consider uh, when you do start to look at modernizing your application portfolio. So firstly, you probably have not one app, but a whole bunch of apps of varying ages, varying qualities, and causing varying amounts of pain. Um, so modernizing these applications, they're probably not all equally valuable or equally urgent or equally complex. So it is worth spending some time actually looking at your apps and figuring out, look, which ones should I modernize? Which ones should I modernize in which order? Uh, what are the benefits that I might get out of doing this and which ones maybe should be left alone? So when it comes to moving uh, an application and its database uh, from a relational database to MongoDB, you have to think about schema. So relational databases have uh, a highly normalized schema, usually resulting in a proliferation of very large numbers of, of tables. Whereas a document database like MongoDB uh, rewards um, some level of uh, denormalization, usually some level of redundancy, um, and also allows you to model things in a much more rich way with nested arrays, nested, nested documents, et cetera. So if you are looking at moving an existing application to MongoDB, you need to think about how can I rationalize the schema, usually resulting in something much more powerful, much simpler. But there is definitely a process in figuring out what that schema should be. And of course, if you change your schema, uh, you have to change your code as well. Um, and depending on what you're trying to achieve, you might want to do a minimalist change where you keep your application source code and change the smallest number of lines of code as possible to keep your application running, or you might take the opportunity to actually do a more significant uh, re-platforming the application to a modern tech stack. And certainly the persistence code with MongoDB is typically way simpler than it would be for an equivalent relational application. Um, and this is the last step I've got in my little cycle here. Um, so while the tool we're talking about, a relational migrator, is about migrating data, uh, this is ultimately just one of many steps and one of many things that you need to consider when you're actually looking to, um, to modernize your workloads. So in thinking about what's involved here, we wanted to um, try to make it easier for you. So MongoDB Migrator, uh, Relational Migrator, um, is our new tool set um, that we're unveiling um, this week at MongoDB World, um, which is designed to make this easier than it was, to look at the things that are currently complex, risky, people often just don't even know how to approach, and ensuring that they are actually solvable problems is what it comes down to. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what the tool is and isn't um, before I get into a, a, quick, a quick demo as well. Um, so the tool can um, analyze your existing relational schemas. It can find the schemas, tables, columns, primary keys, foreign keys, uh, and make those available um, as a scope of what needs to be migrated. Initially, we support four major relational database uh, providers. That's uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. Um, we may support more in the future, but those are the ones that are available at the moment. Um, the, as I mentioned, schema is a huge part of this problem. So we've spent a lot of time uh, building the tools uh, that enable you to map your tabular relational schema uh, into a document schema and make use of all the full power of the MongoDB document model. And of course, it does the data migration as well. So it will not just move the data, but it will transform the data in accordance to your schema changes to make sure when it lands in MongoDB, it's the format that you want. So Migrator is not a silver bullet that will immediately modernize your application portfolio, much as we love to press a button and have it sort of just work. Um, it's not gonna do everything for you. There is, you still have to do the planning. What we're trying to do is take a lot of the effort away in particularly the schema mapping and data migration sides. And it's also uh, not a substitute for knowledge about MongoDB. Uh, the tool gives you a lot of um, abilities to design schemas any way you want. 
If you're not familiar with the best ways of designing schemas, we definitely recommend you work with our architects, consultants, and partners. So give you a quick demo. This is very similar to one you saw yesterday, but um, there was a lot going on, so let me just sort of show you again. Um, this one's not live, although yesterday's was. Um, but I will talk you through what's going on. So Migrate has got a web user interface. Um, so you can run um, through a browser. Um, this is how we connect to the initial database. Uh, we can choose which database type it is. In this case, we'll choose uh, Oracle from those four options. Uh, we provide our um, JDBC connection details, and that will connect uh, to the source database. Um, it will then discover all of the schema objects in that. Um, this is a, obviously a fairly simple one for demo purposes. We've got eight uh, tables in this. In this case, we'll migrate all of those um, and choose those for that project. Next, we give our project a name and uh, choose the casing. This is a little thing, but it's kind of important. We want a modern app, so we don't want shouty Oracle all caps names. Um, and that will apply that naming convention to all of the um, collections and fields uh, that it uses. So this is our design surface now, and we have these uh, beautiful um, entity relationship style diagrams. The pink one at the top is the relational diagram, and the blue green one at the bottom is the MongoDB one. And you can also see the tables and the collections at the left. So we start with a one-to-one -one relationship, um, which is a starting point, but it's not the finishing point. And um, similar to what you saw yesterday, we have our um, orders and order details uh, at the top with a one-to-many relationship. Um, and we have the same thing on the collection side, which is not very sensible in this case. So the right hand here is our mapping pane, and you can see here that we have a new documents mapping type, which we're gonna remove, which removes the corresponding collection. And we have a couple of different types here, and the one we're choosing here is called an array in parent documents. So what we're saying here is the order details should be nested under orders as an array, and you can choose the fields and the field names and types that you want to use here. So when we save that, and if you look at the MongoDB schema, you now see that we don't have that separate collection. We now have an array inside the initial collection that represents that one-to-many relationship in a way that makes sense for MongoDB. Um, next, uh, we're gonna focus on the products. Um, we have a products collection that comes from the products table. And in this case, we actually wanna keep this. So we want some redundancy. So we still want to have like a product catalog, but we'd also like to put a summary of the products under our line items. So this is gonna be like a triple nested uh, special. So we're gonna choose the third mapping type here, which is called fields in child documents, which is where we actually get details from each product, nested under the order details as a, um, as a, a, a JSON object. And in this case, we don't want all the fields, so we're gonna choose just a subset of the fields for this particular purpose. So we save that, we can now see the preview of the MongoDB schema, uh, which has got, um, again, three levels of nesting, an array with an object inside that array coming from three separate tables. So if this was a real schema, we'd almost certainly do some more work here and do some further denormalization. Um, but in the interest of keeping the demo relatively succinct, um, we'll say that we're done. So the data migration is basically where we manage our migration jobs. Um, so this is a new project, so it's got no jobs yet. We can connect, we can connect actually to the same or even a different um, database in case you're doing, say, a, um, a staging or production. And now we're also gonna connect to our Atlas database and you can choose whichever one you want. Or it could even be an on-prem MongoDB if you prefer as well. Um, in terms of the migration options, there's a few things we can do. The continuous option uh, will be a way of actually allowing you to do uh, change data capture to monitor the source database um, for changes and continually stream and transform the data. In this case, we're gonna do the one time too, which is more of a big bang lift and shift kind of approach to migration. Um, we can choose whether you wanna do all the data or just some, which is good for like testing your schema to see whether it works. Um, and we can also drop the, the data from the um, target if um, we want to sort of particularly do an iterative, um, migrate the data multiple times. So when the job um, starts itself, um, what we're doing is uh, basically transforming uh, that data as it goes. So it reads the rows from every table. Um, it transforms uh, each of those in accordance to the mapping rules that we had. Uh, and we get that data migrated uh, over in the structure which you want. Um, and this here, this is um, 3,000 rows in this one, so it's done in, I think, about 10 seconds when this is done. Um, and then to get our money shot of what happened, um, this is the products uh, collection. This is very rectangular because we didn't make any changes here. Um, you can see it's using proper MongoDB data types, so it's using um, sort of decimals and integers and strings um, in accordance with where the data came from. And this is the orders where we did most of the work, and you can see we've got some dates, so it converted all those into the proper MongoDB data types. 
Uh, we also have the, um, the arrays of order details. Um, and then the products within that. So it basically does what it says on the tin. So just quickly, because I am, I know, very low on time here. Um, that's what the tool is able to do today. Uh, things we are looking at doing in the future. So continuous replication, I mentioned that as a key capability, uh, is not available today, but we are actively working on it. So this will be if you want the old and the new systems to coexist for an extended period of time. Uh, but you can keep those in sync using continuous replication. Um, the tool currently runs on a single machine. Uh, basically means you can run a migration job until your laptop falls asleep. Um, so, okay for smaller jobs, but for uh, a production scale migration, we're going to be able to run on a server in your data center, uh, also making use of Apache Kafka for uh, reliability and throughput. Um, we haven't talked too much about, um, I mentioned the application code generation is something, well, ap rewriting application code is a thing that you need to do. Um, so we are looking at what we can do in the tool to maybe accelerate modernizing your code based on our knowledge of the schema. Maybe if you say I'm using a C Sharp or a Node backend, can we generate some of that persistence logic? Um, we do want to provide some schema recommendations, making it easier for people to design appropriate schemas um, to, um, based on what we know about the, the original um, relational schema. Um, and we will provide an Atlas integrated version. Today, it is a tool that you install on a server in your environment. That feels maybe a bit old fashioned, but we realize that probably a lot of your databases are behind a firewall. So we do want to make sure that uh, we can reach your data where it is. So we're currently focusing on on-prem deployment, but not everyone has that restriction. You might be wanting to migrate from, say, RDS. So we will allow that as well. So um, next steps, if you are interested in this tool, um, while we are unveiling it today, it is not publicly downloadable uh, today. Um, the reason for that is uh, that really we want to work with you to make sure that the state of Migrator today is able to meet your requirements. Uh, if you have a, so there's a web form on this that you can fill in and give your details. Uh, we're not trying to steal your data. What we want to do is be in contact and discuss actually what your project's about. If it's something that Migrator supports like next week, then theoretically, if everyone's available, uh, we can do a migration next week uh, with help from our, our field engineering team. Um, if, however, you have a more complex uh, requirement that might require, say, continuous migration, we might say, look, we can't do it now, but we, let's plan to do this work in a few months' time. So um, the tool is still in its very early days. It does work. Um, it is awesome. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we um, don't kind of oversell its capabilities relative to what you need.